I'm Selena Kim, America's face of dating, and today I'm going to be giving you seven core principles that doctors, psychologists, and people really in the top of their fields have found to be present in the world's most intimate, loving, healthy, and strongest relationships out there. But before we jump into method number one, we're going to be just discussing a short email, and then I'm going to talk to you about how these seven core principles can be applied to your relationship today. I have an email here from a client and really the synopsis of the email is that he read my book, Waking the Core of Man, and but he only read about eight chapters in where I talk about the attraction skills and the dating skills and he just kind of like, he got his dream girl and he's like, I don't need that relationship skill stuff, like I, I'm, I'm good, I know everything that I need to know, right? And But he doesn't because he falls into this routine with her, which I specifically talk about in the book. He falls into this routine with her, and that's actually one of the core principles that we're going to talk about later. But you should always treat every day as if you're trying to win her heart and constantly date her and constantly give her affection in each moment that you're with her. But a lot of men believe this Hollywood phenomenon, this Hollywood belief, illusion that after you win her, then you got her for life and you don't have to do anything and they just sit on the couch and they start eating potato chips and they get fat and they start drinking beer and they just think they can watch football all day and not date her anymore, not love her anymore, not give her the attention that she craves. And then a lot of men will come to me after they've fallen into this routine over time and she slaps that divorce paper down his face or she just gets up and leaves because she's like, I deserve more than this. Like, I deserve a man that's going to love me every day, not just treat me like I'm just some, you know, lickety split. And so she leaves and then they come to me when it's too late. And so don't be one of those guys. And luckily this guy in this email caught himself. And so I believe that a lot of people can gain value from this email who may be in the same predicament as him. So let's jump into it. He says, we've talked in person only once, but I wanted to share my journey with you since. If you remember me, my name is TJ and I'm originally from North Dakota. I sell farming equipment. You must be pretty wealthy, TJ, because... I heard that North Dakota and I think South Dakota, like that is like basically like farmland. But the point is that as a man, you should have some sort of purpose in your life. You should have something that makes you go to bed late and wakes you up early because there's actually this study that people believe this facade that you're supposed to grow up and get a good job and then work up till you're 60 and then retire. But actually, they, this study came out where Men who just retired, who got done working and they retired, they actually died within one to two years after retirement. And that's because they lose that motivation. They start waking up in the morning. They start asking themselves, why am I alive? Like men need a purpose in their life. They need to be chasing some goal. They need to be working at it each and every day. And so that's something I want for Team SK is I want you to always be chasing your purpose because not only does it make you more of an attractive man, but it gives you life. It gives you inspiration. And the, the Greek root of inspiration is inspire, which means to breathe to breathe passion into, I believe is how you say it, inspire. And so make sure that you're always chasing some purpose in your life. You're going to end up like one of those guys who wakes up one morning like, why am I alive? He says, that's actually how I met the woman of my dreams, but it didn't start out that way. I used to be very insecure, needy, and clingy, and I just got out of a breakup when you met me, when you and me first met. After following your work, I ended up getting engaged to the woman of my dreams a few, few years later. I dated multiple hot girls and sometimes a few at a time. <laughs> but I found this one, and she may not be the hottest girl that I've dated, but she is the one that I've connected with the most. So you're going to start, you're going to start to figure out after you begin to apply the techniques that I talk about in the club promoting, uh, the club promoting time frame of my book, that it's going to become very, very simple to make attractive girls, to make the girls that you want fall in love with you. But that's a game itself. What's not a game is the final four chapters of my book where I talk about the relationship skills because relationships are not a game. I heard from Tony Robbins that they will strip you down to the rawest version and expose yourself if you don't know what you're doing. And so, but here's like another funny thing is that you see hot women, like he said, you know, like I consistently started to get hot girls. You see, especially in the club, hot women on Saturday night at midnight at their peak. You see them when they're an 11 out of 10 when they've spent three hours doing their makeup and you have this facade on them, like there's some godly being, right? Some goddess, like Aphrodite, the, the, the goddess of beauty. And, you know, I started, the, that facade vanished. 
you know, when I started to hang out with these hot girls, not at midnight on Saturday, but I started hanging out with them at 2.30 on a Wednesday, and I saw them when they had no makeup on, when they were wearing sweatpants, when they started to bitch about their friends and bitch about how bad their life sucks, and suddenly that facade goes away. It vanishes, right? And you start to see them for who they truly are, and it's a human being with a heart. So he says, that's actually where things started to get tricky because I thought I knew what I was doing, but our relationship spiraled out of control to the point where she wanted to call off the marriage. We were living together and I thought that I had it all figured out, but I started to become insecure and too clean again. And I fell into a routine. It pushed her away. I knew you could help me because with this because you always know what to say. People tend to ask me, how do you always know the right thing to say? And, you know, I think about that. I believe it's because I've taken so much action in my life and I failed a lot. I've lost a lot of great people. I lost a lot of great women. I've lost a lot of people that were really there for me because I messed it up myself. And it's like, even though there's a high chance of failure, I still tend to go at it because so many people are in the comfort zone. So many 97 percenters out there are so comfortable with, with, with it, where they're at right now. But that's not what I wanted to be. I wanted to be at the top. I wanted to be one of the best speakers. I wanted to be dating the best women, you know, and I kept failing and I kept failing over and over and over again until I got it right because I wanted to take action. I wanted to make sure that I was the best, not just semi-average or semi-good. I wanted to make sure that I had everything down. And not, another thing that you talked about earlier is that you, you dated consistent women at a time, which a lot of people, when they read my book, they'll settle down with the first girl that they meet. And they have no idea what they're doing because, and a lot of times men are conditioned to, I heard the other day that, you know, a lot of people view it as survivor where it's like, you're supposed to just get one girl and then tough it out no matter how hard it gets when you're miserable, when you're, when you're just like dying, you want something new, right? And that's not how it is anymore. Like you need to go out there and you need to get experience. You need to date multiple women to really find out what you like and what you don't like. And so he says, well, but going back to my point, you know, I failed a lot in my life. And, you know, I, like I said, I lost a lot of great people in my life, but I had to go through those things. I had to fail to really become the man that I am today. He also says I fell into a routine with her as well. So that's why I put a warning sign in my book that this stuff is very, very powerful. Like, especially in the club promoting stuff, like it will make the woman of your dreams fall in love with you. But a lot of people slip up because they become way too prideful and they're like, ah, I, I got this stuff. Like, I don't need, I don't need to really read this stuff. Like, um, I've got it. Like, I've got it down. And they get into a relationship and they fall into a routine or they don't know how to maintain a healthy relationship. Like I talk about in the final four chapters of my book and they come to me way too late and they're just like, help me, help me get her back. How do I save her? And I'm like, did you read the last eight chapters of my book? And they're like, no, I never got around to it. And I'm just like, and it's like, then they come back to me afterward and they're like, you know, like that was a really good read. It really helped me. And I wish that I knew it earlier. And so don't be one of those guys that lets it get to that point. Always take action. Always better yourself. It's called Kaizen, constant and never ending improvement. It's a Japanese supply chain term. He says, it does get a lot harder when you're in a relationship versus just hanging out casually and dating women. I do consider this a successful ending. However, since I was about to lose it all, but I ended up avoiding it by going through your relationship help in your book and in your articles. I should have just taken the time to read the relationship stuff and practice, but I became lazy. I'm sure that was a really humbling experience for you to, you know, that's what they say, that pride cometh before the fall. And so it's like when you become prideful and you're like, oh, I got it down, that's when the fall comes, when you think you know it all. But I've known some people that have lost it all, you know, and luckily you were one of the people that saved it in the end, like you said here, and you got her to fall back in love with you and you're consistently getting better with her. But I've known some people that have lost it all and they've been miserable for years because of it and they let that affect them to this day. So he says, we've been together for 18 months now and we've never been happier. It took a little while to have her fall back into love with me. I really messed things up, but I took it back slowly, one step at a time, and now she's back to her happy, feminine, and loving self. I'm working on the relationship skills and self-improvement skills, like you said, it's never really a destination, but it's a constant journey. I love that. I love that quote. I put that in my book, I believe, in the final four chapters that love in your life should never really be seen as like you want to get somewhere, but you should be constantly, it's like a journey where it's like you're never really going to get to some destination, but you're constantly going to be driving. You're constantly going for it, right? He says, I know to never fall into a routine as you talked about in your book, 
also to constantly be growing with her and dating her. I know there's plenty more I need to learn, so I'm looking forward to your insights, TJ. Well, I took the time to talk to some of the world's most successful psychologists, business people, dating people, relationship coaches out there and experts, and really after talking to them, I've gathered seven core principles that seem to be constantly at the surface in every single successful relationship that you meet. And as you grow and as you get better at this stuff, you will realize that really a lot of people have never seen a very, very loving and healthy and intimate relationship. So let's jump into number one. And number one is to accept them for who they are. A lot of people fall in love, air quotes, with a woman but they're not falling in love with them, they're falling in love with some expectation of who they could be. You should never fall in love with someone's potential. You should always commit to who they are right now, love them for who they are right now, whether it's the past, whether that's the current moment, and accept them for who they are. Because as soon as you start putting expectations on that relationship, is as soon as you start looking down to them, and you you start to believe that you're over them and, and better than them, and that's what causes a relationship to have unhealthy strains and eventually end. Which leads into point number two, principle number two, which is freedom. Expectations, like I talked about in number one, are literally the opposite of freedom. People should have the freedom to pursue their dreams, pursue their goals, pursue relationships with some of their friends and hang out with their friends. And if you don't let them do that, then they begin to resent you because they believe that you are the key factor that's not, the, that's not letting them pursue their dreams or be friends with certain people and it makes them resent you in the end. Which leads me to principle number three, and that is communication. So I once heard that every high-performing couple will never let themselves go to bed angry. And so women, especially, they need communication from you. It's like a lot of guys, though. You know, women, it's like when you you ask them how their day was, you know, they talk for five minutes about them going, them in line for literally two minutes, right? They'll talk forever and they'll give you so many details. But it's like a woman will ask you, like, how's your day? And the man replies, it was good. And women fucking hate that shit. They want you to give details. They want you to communicate with them. And especially when you're upset, it takes a mature person to still be able to communicate with someone even when they're upset. And they put the needs of their relationship and this communication over their own needs. Number four is one of my personal favorites. And it's your misery savior doesn't exist. And so, for example, uh, I've seen a lot in my personal life with my family specifically a lot of times the man will come home from work and they've been working this job for two or three or four years and they absolutely hate it and the wife will ask every single day how was work today and they answer the same time some complaint like eh, it was work or like I eh, hated it like it was too cold blah, blah blah and they bitch about it but they don't take any action to change it and if I get annoyed with that as a man imagine how it makes your wife feel as a man if you're not taking action for some side hustle to make some business successful, you're not taking action to really get out of that miserable job, then what does the wife start to think of you? She st- or the girlfriend, she starts to look at you as weak. She begins to lack trust in your masculine core. She's like, well, like, he, it's been years and he's saying the same thing. It's like, and then she starts to look at you and she's like, this guy's just, he's weak. Like, he's not willing to take action. He doesn't believe in himself. And then she begins to test you more and more. She becomes bitchy and moody. So as a man, you need to always, I talked about earlier, always have some purpose that you're pursuing. Have some drive that wakes you up early. Have some side hustle. It's very important for your life and your relationship. Number five is also one of my personal favorites, and that's never fall into a routine. So a lot of couples, and this kind of has to deal with number four as well, a lot of couples will come into a relationship and they're expecting that person to complete them. But you should always be complete yourself by pursuing your purpose. And then you come in that relationship. And a successful relationship shares that completeness together. So you're not depending on someone else for your happiness. And this one specifically is for you, TJ. Because growing up, a lot of my family, they would tell me, you know, like the fire is just going to burn out in your relationship or your marriage. And you're supposed to just, you know, tough it out no matter how hard it gets. And that's so not true so it's like a routine that is literally letting the fire burn out in your relationship and people that say that shit that they're like oh yeah the fire will just burn out one day that's more of a reflection of their relationship and their lack of ability to love their wife to date their wife and to make their life feel like she's the only woman in the world and they eventually just like get bored of her and they give up and they stop dating her and that's why the fire burns out it has nothing to do with you and so one of the ways to do this is that you can be like you know to keep that constant spark in that relationship to keep that fire burning is that you can be like hey babe i heard this from the way of the superior man by david data you go 
hey babe, pack your bags for three days. I'm taking you somewhere special and I'm not telling you where. And even though she's gonna be like, tell me, tell me where we're going, you don't tell her. You don't give in to that. You want it to be a mystery. You want it to be a surprise because that is what keeps her guessing. It's what keeps her chasing. And a lot of people don't understand is that one of the best ways to keep your woman chasing you is to do what you did to make her fall in love with you at the very beginning. Number six is supportiveness. And so the most successful relationships, like I said earlier, give each other the freedom to pursue their dreams, to pursue their hobbies. And I've seen so many relationships as well where it's like, you know, the woman or the man they'll be pursuing, they'll be doing some side hustle and they really want to make it big one day and their partner has some insecurities and they're like, oh, you'll never be able to do that or like, you know how hard it is to do that? Like when I was writing a book, this is hilarious, I was talking to somebody about this today. When I was writing my first book, they were talking, they were telling me like, why would you want to write a book? Like, like you know how hard it is to be a successful author? And it's like now I've had over thousands of people read my book, I'm very successful with it. But it's like so many people were telling me that and as soon as I published my book, those same people, they become like professional marketers when they've never marketed a book or anything in their life. They're like, you should do ads like this. You, sh you shouldn't be like this ad. I'm just like, where was that? Like, where was that supportiveness? So it's like, as your partner, you need to constantly be supporting your partner. And it's like, cause they may have nobody that supports them and you need to be there for them. If you're committed to them, then you need to be all in for them. The seventh and final core principle is affection, vulnerability, trust, and openness she will need affection from you she loves to bond with you she loves to just lay there and talk to you and stare into your eyes and she wants to feel your full presence in on is on her because a lot of guys that will get into a relationship and when they fall into a routine they stop their minds are halfway for her halfway thinking about something else and if you choose to give her time your full presence should be on her. You should grab her, pick her up, spin her around, tickle her, kiss all over her, pin her to the ground, wrestle her, fucking hit her with a pillow, have a pillow fight with her. Make sure your full affection and attention is on her. But trusting someone is very difficult too. It takes your entire heart. It takes a lot of vulnerability. And for two people to love each other fully, they need to make sure that they're showing each other who they are, their entire heart because you won't be able to fall in love and grow your relationship if you don't know who each other are on a deep level. And I totally understand, like a lot of people that I coach and I even have, I've been cheated on before. And it's been hard for me to open up and trust people because of that. But you know what, I found that if you open up first, a lot of people let their guards down and they begin to trust you more as well. And the quickest way to get a hold of me is to go to my website and book a paid coaching session with yours truly for the amount of time that you choose and we're gonna turn your relationship around very fast. I'm Sonic Kim, America's face of dating, and I'll see you next time.